For the past few months, we have been working hard on a huge project, converting this 7.5 ton lorry into a home for our family of five. We've worked really hard juggling the lorry build with family life, work and vlogging, and we are now desperate to move in. So coming up in this week's episode, we finally get our electrics installed. We head away for a little break and a guest talk at the Southwest Motorhome Show, and we transform our two-seater cab into a five-seater one. That's crazy. <laughs> that got my heart pumping. We're Right, I am excited about this coming week. We've got a lot going on, and the big thing is the electrics. Now, I'm really, really pleased we're getting the electrics done. I've been waiting for this for a while. So we've got, uh, you would have seen, we've done the ceiling or a bit of the ceiling, so we can have some lights in there, but the solar panels will be going on. All the batteries will be linked up, the inverters, the chargers, all of that sort of stuff. Our nice panel, which I need to make this morning, will go there, that would look lovely. So yeah, I'm really, really excited. So that's happening today, which is Monday and then Tuesday. Wednesday, we're heading off to the Shepton Showground near Bath, and we're gonna be there for a good five days. So yeah, it's a really good week. I look forward to a bit of time off, refresh, collect up, and then we'll come back and crack on. But I am excited for the next two days getting these electrics done. It's been a long time coming, and hopefully it will just make it feel much more homely. And also, I stopped work yesterday about eight o'clock. Quarter past eight, it was dark. Quarter past eight, so the lights in here are gonna make a big difference. So we can actually crack on and Kira can keep me working longer. All right. I've already got the egg, mummy. Thank you, I need to just get Jack, make sure Jack's set up with his next bit of learning, hello. <laughs> So we're now in September, the leaves are already starting to fall off the trees and we're being reminded just how little time we really have left to finish this lorry. But with it being September, it is also time for the kids to head back to school. And obviously by back to school, I mean back to homeschooling. They have had a little break over the summer, which was needed for them, needed for us to concentrate on the lorry build and not the schooling. Quite good timing really. But it is now time to head back into it. So we've sat them down, we've ordered some school books, we've spoke to them about what sort of subjects they want to be learning. So Piper wants to learn more about her oceans and dive a bit deeper into that. And Jack has decided that he is going to be learning about castles for the start of this term, which is really exciting and might involve a little field trip. So there is one subject which we all have been trying to learn as a family since we started homeschooling over a year ago, and that is French. We think it'd be amazing to speak another language, and we meet so many people all on our travels who are bilingual and can just chat away in multiple languages, and we think it is absolutely incredible what an amazing skill it is to have, and we, to be honest, are jealous at times that we aren't able to do that. Now that is something we really want to change, so we have had the pleasure of partnering up with Rosetta Stone to improve our French language skills and learn a few phrases which are going to be really helpful on our travels. Just like this one. Je voudrais trois croissants, s'il vous plaît. And this one. The way the puck does you. So one of the features that we really like about the app is the voice recognition tool. Des hommes. Des hommes. Which helps you perfect your pronunciation of all your French words. Des femmes. Um, which to be honest I think is the hardest part about learning a new language. Also the reminder function is really really good so if you know that you've got a busy day the next day and you don't want to miss out on your French learning for the day then you can set your reminder for say seven o'clock in the evening to do a little bit of your French learning. Now if learning a new language is something that you feel really passionate about but really struggle with then Rosetta Stone might be just what you need. So we actually have an exclusive discount which will give you guys 50% off all subscriptions including their lifetime one which gives you access to 24 different languages across the course of your life which is excellent value great personal investment and means you can actually learn at a pace which suits you and hopefully in a few months time when we're ordering those croissants in the bakery in France we'll be able to show you a few more of the phrases that we have learned So we're at the Southwest Motorhome and Campervan Show here in Shepton. The gates have just opened, so we're just having a nice 
look around and it's really very busy at the moment so we're going to go and see what we can find see if there's anything useful for the lorry and maybe grab some food see that would be absolutely ideal i think no it wouldn't why wouldn't that? it's not a proper ladder <laughs> no that's a huge step yeah do we not want something that actually no, fits to the lorry though no it won't fit to the lorry but yeah they're not heavy charlie could go up and down i don't know i'm not here for it no. i'll come out later without you <laughs> we are at a campfire show today and uh we are going and uh we did some no, axe throwing. You haven't done axe throwing yet. Yes, we have. No, you haven't. And we had ice cream. You haven't had ice cream? Yes, we have. No, you haven't. Yes, we These have. These are all things you want to do, isn't it? Yeah. Okay guys, welcome back to day two of the Southwest Motorhome Show. This is D-Day for us, where our, our talk is in about four hours, isn't it? Feeling it is. nervous? I'm feeling very nervous. You cope with these much better than I do. Well, I cope till about 10 minutes beforehand and then... And then he starts yeah. crying. And then I don't. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. really. No, I don't, no. Uh, well... Who yeah. <laughs> would like to go to Norway? But, um, yeah, that's really One thing you'll notice when you drive through Norway in most scanning countries, there's, there's very few Brits. And when we were walking through Stavanger, we passed another British couple and then another British couple, and then another British couple. And we went down to the harbour, and there was a massive great P&O cruise ship in, so we were sharing some yeah. 2,000 other bricks that day, but it was still a good time. Yeah, so although Rick has said that it's a great alternative to, to the tunnel, please do bear in mind that that's a tight mountain road, um, not for the faint-hearted, there's no barriers on the side, and as we were travelling up, there was another motorhome travelling down, and it was very, very tight and pretty scary trying to not fall off the mountain. Yeah, we had to reverse back into a lay by yeah. on the cliff side. I think I have my eyes. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty doggy. We like an IKEA because you can park the night in most IKEAs. Um, but you can park there free of charge. Yeah, so as you can see, this is as close as we could get to the glacier itself. It's all barriered off. But you can book private tours where you can actually walk on the glacier itself. Uh, our kids are basically just too young to be able to do that. I think they have to be eight years old, but it gives us a reason to come back. I think. Absolutely. And if you're lucky like we were in summer 2019, it will look like that. Um, if you're not so lucky like for us last year, it will look like this. Um, but yeah, we're actually planning on going back to Norway next year in the lorry. So, um, yeah. We won't be doing some of those mountain roads down there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ruling that. <laughs> I think I didn't agree to that. Well, thank you very much and hope you enjoy the rest of your show. So it's the last night out for us uh, here at the show and the kids are actually dragging us out tonight, aren't they? <laughs> I know, sign of ages, eh? <laughs> we're really tired, but the kids are desperate to go and see the live music. So that's what we're doing. We're not sure how long we'll be out for, but we'll see. Minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> we'll see how we get on. Right guys, we're back from the show. Remember these? <laughs> Remember these? Hey, do they work here? They are working marvellously. They are perfect, look at that. I'll and give you that. We've got our electric sorted. So, as you can see, we're all lit up. But come on, have a look inside, because it looks wicked. Look at this. We have power. It's epic, isn't it? It's wicked. It is absolutely wicked. It makes it feel so much more homely. So basically what we've got, this is our little control panel. We've got a USB port down here so we can actually put six USB, there's six USB ports and two USB-Cs. We've got yeah. two 230 volt uh, things, lots of switches. So at the minute- These are got, things guys. What is? Things. These are sockets, yeah. <laughs> um, We've got three spares, and then these will come off eventually once we once we re remember what they were. Are oh. we've got an LPG sensor that's not wired in yet? Water tank sensor that's not actually wired in yet properly. 
Truma unit that uh, we need to plug the gas in and all of that so that will get up and running. And then we've got our energy screen, look at this. So this, we've got three switches, so we can actually turn the lights off. And then we can click our devices, have a look at our batteries, 400 amp hours, 99% controller. So it's bringing in nothing, because it's dark. Yeah, tells us everything. So that's wicked. What else we got? We've got a little cupboard, but we'll show you that tomorrow, because it is dark, so, um, you ain't gonna be able to see in there. And obviously the solar is on the roof. Solar's on the roof, so we've got three 200 watt panels, they're flexi panels, and they've done a special adhesive pattern to maximize airflow underneath the flexi panels, because we're flexi. The reason we did that is because they weigh five kg a panel, as opposed to 15 kg, so we say 30 kg in weight. And this is a very thin roof. So lighter the better. Yeah. And we'll show you this because this is wicked. Da -da! Look at that. That's a whopper, mate. Our fridge is on. And we've actually got it switched on and we've loaded it because we thought, why yeah. not? <laughs> yeah. So I took the lorry out today for a spin for an hour. And within about half an hour, all the batteries were full. Sweet. So, and it says one of the cool things on here, I'll just show you. It says how long we've got left. So we've got three days, six hours. Off grid. Off grid. So if we, well, that's if we just, if, if we did, if it was dark. Yeah. If it was like Norway, where there's no light at all in the winter and you didn't turn the engine on, you could run these for three days. Okay, yeah. But yeah. obviously tomorrow morning, the sun comes up, we're going to get more sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you're going to drive. charging it, yeah. Yeah. So it's wicked, so we've got a nice digital display on the Truma unit. That will be able to, hopefully we'll go into that and be able to do all our timings and all that sort of jazz. Water sensors, that'll uh, be fun. I'm not really a tech person. Mm -hmm. I like it to start with, and then I'm like, oh, look at this, yeah, that's great. And then I move on <laughs> to something else. So, but that does look wicked, and what we're probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna shorten this panel, maybe, because we might put a shelf in here. Yeah. So we might shorten that. And obviously we'll be painting this. Yeah, so guys, I don't know what colour to paint this panel. If it goes blue, is it just becoming part of the bathroom? I don't I don't know whether to do the split colours just to carry on that line or whether to actually go cream nah, or yellow. I think do something different. I don't know. I'm or, not sure. Or, 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 no, that wouldn't make sense. Yeah, I don't know. Do something with it. Tell us what you think, guys. Also, when the kids go to bed, we can turn off the kitchen lights and then here, if we want to just dull it down a bit, we can just keep that light on. Nice. Yeah. Cozy night. <laughs> right, good night guys. Radio guys, we've got the rear seats being fitted tomorrow. That's going to be very exciting, taking it from a two-seater to a five-seater. But I was thinking that I haven't actually shown you the cab yet. So let's do a little cab tour now, and then we'll show you the big reveal of the rear seats. Okay, so this is a Mercedes Atigo 818, 7.5 tonne. So the 818 is the slightly beefed up version. It's uh, 180 brake horsepower instead of 150, uh, which is gonna be nice for those nice hilly areas and mountainous areas that we go to, having that extra bit of power, hopefully is gonna do us good. So a little bit about the cab. Uh, this is a sleeper cab. So it, at the minute we have a bunk in the back. So if, uh, if I'm ever in the doghouse, I suppose I could sleep there. But that's going to be taken out, so no doghouse. Um, it's a manual. It's a manual gearbox. Um, there's nothing really too fancy in the cab. There's cruise control, which I think all lorries will have. Um, but apart from that, it, there's not really much in it, to be honest. There's no air conditioning. Um, we've got lane assist and traction control, that sort of stuff, which is normally standard. But yeah, we, this is a big cab. Um, and this is, again, why we're such a heavy vehicle, because it's a sleeper cab. 
um, and it is also a high top which is pretty cool so at the minute we've just got the two seats one two and we're going to be putting in another three seats in the back there which is going to be pretty awesome and we're also going to be putting in some side windows which is pretty awesome but on to the good things about the cab we've got eight cup holders can anyone actually beat that let me know how many cup holders you've got in your in your motorhome or your van if you've got more than eight then uh you know we'll send you out a free sticker and lots of storage up in these bits these bits these bits one of them i think is this one's full of salt so the lorry the person driving this beforehand obviously loved uh cooking and uh putting a bit of salt because this one's full of salt this is our taco which i've set to out so it's still working we're not going to remove it um but it is set to out maybe that's our diesel heater not sure cd player a couple of little fancy light switches um yeah this is pretty cool there we go little roof vent but i have tried having that open um when we're driving and it sort of makes a bit of a racket we've got a reversing camera there we've got these other cameras what are these for is this what is this what lorry drivers have to put up with having internal cameras is that a security thing or is that so your boss can keep an eye on you if it's the latter and it's for your boss to keep an eye on you, i think that's a bit a bit out of order um but yeah we've got a camera on the front as well and an internal camera so i'm going to be taking that off um or blocking it off at least just in case i don't know i don't even know who, who's monitoring that so i'll have to have a look at it and see um and get rid of it um okay what else we got we've got a safe down here i'm gonna try and take that out uh i think that's bolted to the under of the cab so we're actually going to try and tilt the cab today which is sort of quite exciting and quite scary the idea of flipping this cab up <laughs> and then we've got the bed as i said underneath we've got plenty of storage and our diesel heater so we've got another diesel heater in here um so it's obviously not going to it's nothing to do with our our main living area so um we're probably just going to take it out and uh sell it probably uh so there we go so yeah i'm going to take out the rear bed today take out all of that sort of stuff and get it prepared for the chap coming in tomorrow to fit our receipts so let's do it is it heavy very heavy I might need a bit of a hand. Flip-flops are not there. <laughs> Those flip-flops again, baby. Those flip-flops, people keep having a go at me, didn't they, about my flip-flops. Okay, where's my hand as well? Anyone want a uh, sleeper bunk? <laughs> If you do, it's yours. We've now got the bunk out um, and I've got all the framing out for what the bunk sat on. And I've got the heating ducting out. I haven't got the heater itself out. Um, I'm not sure what to do with the heater. Um, I can take it, the, the, it's just bolted on, so I could easily take it off, but it's got a fuel pipe plumbed into the diesel tank. Can I just cut that? Do I need to seal it? I presume I'd need like a little end cap or something to seal it. So if you've um, if you know anything about diesel heaters and plumbing directly into the tank, what do I need to do? Do I just cut the pipe and seal it? Or do I need to take the whole pipe off? Let me know what I need to do. But this van, this, this lorry is a bit grotty. Look at this. Look at all this dust. So we're having a big tidy up. Now I don't have me, me hoover because it broke. Um, so I'm going to have to use uh, a brush and wipes to hopefully give it a good clean. And Piper's been in here. I think she's managed to scavenge of loose coins about £1.50. So she's a happy girl. She'll be going to the shop, but the deal is she shares it with me. That's the deal. Okay. So I've had a read in a manual and we've very kindly been sent the right uh, wheel nut wrench. A huge thank you to CVAM Limited for that. Uh, which also fits a hydraulic ram on the cab. So we're gonna 
attempt to do it. And <laughs> I am nervous. nervous. He's nervous. But the cab, it's like a, it's like a defining gravity sort of thing, isn't it? It's like that should not tilt, tilt over. Yeah. You don't just want the whole thing to come off. <laughs> yeah, so there is a couple of rules, guys. Do not stand in front of the cab. If Teddy comes out, you need to tell him to go somewhere. Yeah, else, that's basically. fine. What's the cab? This yeah. is the cab. The blue bit. Okay. Hey, I'm scared. Let's listen. It's moving. <laughs> it just doesn't look like it should do it, should it? It doesn't. Do I start? <laughs> no. Does this look like some sexy advert here? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> if someone was in uh, the cab, they'd be like, Dum. How far are you? the size of that engine. The trouble is, I don't know how far it's supposed to go. Stop. No. No. You're joking. I think you can go how far you can go. It's wobbly, isn't it? Okay, there, that's that. I don't write this in my notebook. Oh, I don't like it at all. I don't write this in like my notebook. It. It's like it wants to just tip forward. This is when you like go too far and it does just no, roll. No, I don't say Charlie that. Wow. Holy moly. That's crazy. <laughs> all right, guys, that got my heart pumping. <laughs> um, it just doesn't look like it should do that, should it? Like I've seen them on, like, on the side of the road and stuff like that. I know they tilt, but it just doesn't look like it should do that. At it all. looks like it's all just going to come falling down, doesn't it? It does, because it's not like it's just a couple of hydraulic lifts. But look at the size of that engine. That's massive. Yeah, engine under here. So this is how they get to the engine to do all the. Well, I don't know if they do it to get service in. I don't really know. But... Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So the reason we tilted the cab is one, I've never tilted the cab before because I didn't have the right socket. So once again um thanks for sending that much appreciated uh but secondly scott seats who uh, are going to be fitting our rear seats they wanted potentially the cab to be tilted when they did it now they ain't going to be able to do it like this <laughs> and i think you know even my health and safety judgment might say it's probably not the best idea tilting it slightly to do the cabs because they're going to have to be inside as well putting all the nuts and so I think they're going to have to work with the small gap they're going to have to play with. But we'll see what they say. Um, but there's no point us holding this like this for too much longer. So we're now going to put it back. Yeah. yeah. And they're coming tomorrow, aren't yeah. they? But so. I'm just going to have a quick check of the tyres while I'm here. Make sure they're all looking good. Let's have a look. Hey, that's your seat. Oh wow. <laughs> Cactus back in our salsa. Look, yeah. They're really loose. They're easy to pull. Yeah. That's good. Oh, this is epic. <laughs> what do you think, Jack? Good. Good? This is my seat. You're in the middle. Oh. We'll put your car seat on it. Yeah, okay. need car seat no, on I to make don't. it better. Yeah, no, you Mine's do. the right size. We all still need car seats. What do you think, though? I want this. I want this I size. I think, Teddy, you will be in the middle, probably. Why? Because there's not much leg space there for you. Yeah, I'm fine here. Fiber fine. likes it. It's like the king position. Yeah. Queen, should I say. How do you like them, guys? Good. Good. This is my seat. <laughs> this is my seat. Like him? Yeah. Okay, me and Jack are measuring, but uh, we just need to carry on and not worry about anything serious with GoPro cameras, okay? So we're gonna turn it off now and you can stay tuned for more adventures.